I have to continue on and play and talk about United. Manchester United. So it's been confirmed. News that we all knew would happen. So it's no super surprise, but still, you know, here's the news. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, news that we knew that would happen. So no big surprise here, courtesy of Sky Sports News. Eric Ten Hag, May United boss, extends his contract until 2026. That's the only really surprising bit. It's not a longer contract extension. It seems like they've only given him one year. So, um, Sky Sports News breaks it down a little bit more here. Ten Hag's future of Man United's boss has been in doubt at the end of the season, but the club decided to keep the Dutchman and have given him an extra two years to continue at Old Trafford. The deal continues on existing terms and there is an increased support around Ten Hag from strengthened footballing leadership team. Discussions also continue on the potential to refresh his staff. Now... I'm okay with this because it's not as long of a deal as I thought it would be. I had a feeling they were going to go all chips in and give him like a four-year contract extension, maybe two, maybe even three years. But the fact that they've given him one makes me believe that more than likely they are planning for a future long-term without Eric Ten Hag. But for the immediate future, they didn't think it viable or make it sense that they would sack him and sign somebody else. They thought probably it was too risky. If I was Eric Ten Hag... I'm not going to lie. I'd be kind of disrespected. I'd be a little bit disrespected. They don't want you. They actively interviewed other managers while you still had the job. You won the FA Cup at the end of the season. They still weren't confident in you. And then last minute they'll come when the other options fell through. Then they come back to you and you take the job. And then they reward you by only giving you a year extension. I'd be a little bit disrespected. But... He probably doesn't care. He wants to win trophies. He wants to prove his worth by taking the club back to where it belongs and obviously proving the doubters like myself wrong. I'm all for it. Let's see how it goes. But I'm happy that we're now entering into a new era of United. We're now entering into an accountability era because I felt like in previous years, especially under the Glazers, people got away with murder. I feel like Phil Jones, a good example, a player that was plagued by injuries, who we only really let go of the club, I think only two years ago, he had an, an, a really long time at the club, maybe five to seven years, I think, at the club, um, re- hardly played, collected um, salaries, is still, I think, employed on a part-time basis as a coach or something at the club. All of that stuff, I think, happened because the Glades in general, there wasn't an accountability culture. Players were allowed to kind of take the piss, managers took the piss, and their jobs were ne- never really on the line really for the you know for lack of a better term the only players that really get sold at United are the ones that want to leave or the ones that are sometimes surplus to requirements or like kick up a bit of a fuss but if you just keep your head down you can stay at United and collect a check for a long bloody time it is a good place to quote unquote you know soft retire so I'm glad that starting from the manager there's clearly an accountability culture they've given him a year if he you know miraculously gets us playing good football we are top of the league by christmas or something we're in the running of winning trophies he might get rewarded with a longer contract i'm all for it but this idea that people just get contracts just because they're alive and have a heartbeat is insane I personally wouldn't have kept him after the FA Cup win. I don't think the FA Cup victory should change, you know, finishing eighth in the season, personally, if that was me. But I also understand that Ineos weren't really too certain on the other options. I don't think Ineos keeping Eric Ten Hag was a reflection of him being a good manager. It was mostly that the other options weren't really, really solidified and really kind of they weren't really shown as other options so they just kept the person that they know just to kind of make things easier and make the transition a little bit smoother for them so i can kind of understand that i get it i don't like it but i kind of get it so looking forward looking forward um I'm eager to see what he's going to do because now he's under pressure to perform. He'd obviously want to stay longer at the club. That's probably why he accepted to stay in the first place, even though they're actively, you know, interviewing other people. So all the onus is on him to do well. All the onus is on him to do well. Then we got some other good news here as well, courtesy of Sky Sports News, regarding the appointment, finally, finally, of Dan Ashworth from Newcastle as our new sporting director. Um, this is the news. It says, Man United have appointed Dan Ashworth as a sporting director. The 53-year-old commences his new role at Old Trafford within immediate effect. A joint statement from the club reads, Newcastle and Manchester United have reached an agreement for the immediate release of Dan Ashworth from his contractual obligations at Newcastle. The terms of his agreement remain confidential 
mutual between the clubs. Newcastle thanks Dan for his services and wishes him well for the future. Newcastle initially were demanding 20 million compensation for the former FA technical director with Manchester United looking to pay a fraction of that but the compromise was reached in the last few days. The deal also helped um, Newcastle comply with profitability sustainability rules PSR this month. Ashworth had been at the gardening leave at Newcastle since February. The hiring of Ashworth is the latest hierarchical hire done by Sir Jim Ratcliffe and a new Ineos minority investors. This is really funny, isn't it? Imagine paying 20 million compensation for a flipping football director. He doesn't even play the game. He's just a backroom staff, head office person. This basically shows you that generally there is a lack of people who are really good at what they do there's a lack of competency in in sports especially in england and football so the people that actually do know what they're doing at the highest level get compensated a lot in the in the same way a player does so i'm happy to see him anywhere at the club we've got now a proper solid football director and now going forward the structure of the club is actually pretty decent I'm actually curious to see what Ineos will do. Um, I'm still not going to be sold by, you know, all of these moves. I still need to see the outgoings. But Ineos so far, the minority stake of United and the sporting side of things is pretty decent. You've got Sir Jim Ratcliffe there. You've got Jean Blanc there. You've got Sir David Ra um, Brailsford as a top brass. And underneath them, you've got Omar Barada as CEO. Jason Wilcox there, director, um, technical director. You've got sports director Dan Ashworth. Reporting to those is Christopher Veal. And then you've got the coach, um, Ayrton Haag, Rene Hack, and obviously Van der Schroeder as an assistant. That's a pretty decent um, football structure. And Ayrton Haag had kind of intimated that he was struggling a lot because of the structure was pretty shit under the Glazers. So now Ineos have come in on the sporting side of things. He has no excuses. All Ericton Haag inners, all Ericton Haag sexuals, all Ericton Haag fanboys will have no excuses now. He has proper assistants. Um, he has proper sporting people above him. And he has proper CEO executive types as well above that also. So a proper structure with proper help. And all he has to do is focus on the coaching of the fucking players and getting us playing well. Can he turn things around? I'm very sceptical, but I'm curious to see how it pans out. I'm curious to see how it pans out.